a fleeting moment. So I think that that is it. So, um, John, do you have uh, some liaison reports? Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, I attended the Board of Health, which actually was this evening, earlier mm. this evening. Um, and they are um, they're preparing for a variety of things. One of the things was necessary is that uh, we've hired a, a temporary um, administrator, mm -hmm. um, an experienced, um, semi-retired gentleman um, who's done some work with us in the past, Greg uh, Erickson. Greg Erickson. Hmm. He was officially appointed tonight um, by the board. And um, furthermore, there was a discussion about um, public health nurse and you know there's going to be it appears that we will not have the services um, of <coughs> the Melrose uh, public health nurse however um, there's some discussion of doing a little sharing work possibly with Wilmington or uh, either through the medical reserve core okay. um, so uh, those will get covered and also um, Bob and Jean were present and um, authorized uh, the fact that uh, the administrator, although that position is going to be open on a full-time basis, available in the 16 budget, um, we need to get the process started now. Mm -hmm. and should that person be able to be hired a little in advance, we would work around <coughs> the finances of right. that. Right. Um, and so those job descriptions are being, you know, created for approval and. Um, some postings are going to go in all the appropriate places so that uh, that person mm -hmm. is in place. And I think from there, you know, the thing starts to flow. Right. Um, uh, there was further discussion at that meeting about um, they would like to, uh, I believe they plan sometime after the snow before the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> if there is such a time <laughs> anymore, I don't know mm. if there is. Um, they have plans to have a, a brief presentation um, probably at uh, the Pleasant Street Center mm -hmm. where they invite back the stakeholders that helped them launch the there was about 18 or 20 different stakeholders who helped them with some data to launch the strategic plan they want mm -hmm. to present that and that'll be a time also um, they will be inviting all of us <laughs> to attend mm -hmm. and so you know um, it'll be a little more leisurely opportunity to hear their entire plan mm -hmm. you know not wedged into many other things right. so so that'll be coming up I'm gonna guess probably in uh, late April mm -hmm. um, the, the goal would be maybe May uh, that if the administrator has been hired by that time that'll be a great time to introduce the new administrator so right. that so mm -hmm. they're they're kind of moving down the road so um, all's well there and mm -hmm. a lot of work left in front of them but they've done some really good work Mm -hmm. under some challenging situations um, right. in, in completing their strategic plans. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll be uh, attending, I, I, we've had a meeting since I was at my last ARCASA meeting and so there'll be another one coming up this Thursday. So, mm -hmm. uh, recreation is, uh, I'm going to be meeting with the Birch Meadow Committee on Thursday morning for an informal discussion about where the Birch Meadow plan is going. So mm -hmm. that's really all I have. Right. Dan. Okay, uh, just an update on the uh, hiring process for the Director of Administrative Services. Uh, first round of ratings for the resumes has been completed. Uh, we've identified about eight people who we're absolutely going to bring in for full interviews and another eight that we will bring in subject to a successful phone screen. Okay. So that's moving right along. Thank you for that suggestion. Yeah. Worked out well. Uh, also, I just wanted, uh, I don't know, Bob, if you were going to cover this, but we uh, we were in receipt of a letter issued today from the uh, Office of the Attorney General of the State notifying the Town of Reading that uh, the special town meeting Article 7 and 8 which pertain to the Charter Amendments have been approved. Actually 8 did not require AG approval because that is a, going to be a special act of the legislature. The only exception was taken uh, uh, to the uh, Charter as voted was uh, the portion in it, Section 8.1 that authorizes the town clerk to make changes to the town's charter uh, for, quote, non-substantive changes. That was ruled in conflict with state law. So that will have to be struck from the charter. Is that automatically struck by virtue of the? Yeah, I, I asked Ray, um, if you don't mind, sure. um, should we just cross that out in the version we send to the voters? He said, delete it as if it never existed. Okay. Done. So that's that's good. That's timely. That's exactly seven minutes. 
And and, 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 and we said we'd be to your liaison report by the time you got here. Just just more on the reason for that was I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, when Ray asked the AG, you know, we've done these in the past in bylaws, and they said that's right. We allow that phrase in a bylaw. We don't allow it in a charter. That's the first time he's ever run into that with a charter. So, you know, the key was to allow the town manager to recodify, renumber. Mm -hmm. Now, any change you make has to go to the voters yeah. or go through the process. Mm -hmm. So, I guess that's the safest way to do it. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks, man. Kevin. Ladies on the report. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Both kids are now fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kids are good. They're fed. Yep. <clears throat> I got here a little earlier than anticipated, thanks to the traffic gods, so that works well. Um, I don't have any liaison report. I, I did want to make one comment, uh, however, just in regards to this past month that we had on, on, on a couple of different levels, really. Um, I, I know, for the most part, uh, I, I haven't heard too many complaints. I don't know about yourself, Bob, if you've gotten no. more than maybe we have, which, very, which is great. Few. I think the, uh, the citizens um, you know, in town mm -hmm. have been very patient with what's going on and I think very understanding <laughs> <laughs> with what's going on and I just I wanted to recognize that because it's yeah. you know this could have been a snowballing of, of complaints and yes I, I, <laughs> I didn't hear that I, I was hoping that you hadn't got them either no, to be honest with you and this is shocking to me I've heard more compliments than complaints over the last four weeks that's that's that's, that's great. really great I, I think so. the, you know it kind of was like people were annoyed but then it got so bad they really yeah. thought about it <laughs> and they said well I guess we're not so badly off because you see what's on TV <laughs> and in other places uh, but I, I think it was kind of a wake-up call to people that, you know, your life can be interrupted a lot worse than a little snow at the end of your driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so for the mo uh, so I'm, I'm pretty, um, I, I think it's pretty amazing for the, um, <clears throat> for both what the DPW has done with the amount of snow that we've got and the record totals and the patients um, from the residents around town has been yeah. really the, the two have been outstanding. Um, and I just wanted to recognize that. I also wanted to just recognize one other thing. Um, snow removal, I think, is continuing, correct? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we're not going to stop. <laughs> we're not going to stop. Um, the only reason I bring that up is I know uh, some, of the, some of the areas that are hurt the most around town are our local businesses, yeah. Um, yeah. certainly. So if, if you feel like venturing out, I'm, I'm sure they're very willing to, to accommodate you coming out to see them. They've, they've had a lot of snow days themselves, which kind of hurts their, um, their operations. So if you have a chance to get out and use our local uh, vendors, please, please do so. If anybody has four hundred fifty thousand dollars lying around, we, we we could sure use a little we help. We surely could use that. <laughs> Is that our estimated that, cost of this? That's the overage right now. Is that the overage right now? Right. I thought As it was of more last than five fifty. Okay, that's, yeah. that's what I, I thought I it was closer to six. Yeah. And, we, and then cash. Oh, tomorrow what? it'll be. That's why we. Have oh, that, yeah. right. that is why. That was from a FinCom member. I thought Absolutely. that was authentic. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then hopefully we'll do all the paperwork to file to get any kind of emergency. Um, reimbursement that might that's not looking as good as you would some. expect because Washington isn't really open right now no. yeah right right <laughs> so well it's not like we need the money this minute right. but you know if we get reimbursed later on down the down yeah. the way that's that's also good so that's all I have all right excellent um, I, I see we have a couple of guests in the audience so we have any public comment <laughs> One is I think it's great that the, that, that folks have kind of been on the hey, hey, Barry, I know who you are, but maybe you can tell us oh, who yeah. you are and what precinct you're from. I don't need to stand up, do I? No, you no, don't. No, no. Before long, enough. you wrote yeah. candidate for board of selectmen. Um, two things. One is that um, while it's great that people have been really you know, supportive, um, one thing that I know that they did in the city of Boston and, and, uh, is they really made a special plea for folks to shovel out the fire hydrants. Yeah. Um, we did it twice on my street. I have to admit that the last time I was a little negligent. So I don't know if that's something that can go out on the town. You know, on the town. I know we have sort of the mm. sort of the town uh, alert system yep. kind of thing. But though, I mean, I've noticed when I go around, I see the little yellow top sticking up, and right. um, it's it's really hard to ask people to do that on top of shoveling out their own driveways. But you know that that's really critical. And then the other thing is is that. Um, when the snow melts, we are going to get, and we're already starting to get, yeah. tons and tons of potholes. And that's where I think, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I think that's where the phones are really going to start to yeah, ring. I agree. Yeah. And so I just, mm -hmm. yeah, incur, you know, if there's any sort of plan to 
mm -hmm. sort of you know spend the money early on mm -hmm. or target certain areas on the potholes. That's going to uh, be. I think West Street's yeah. a big one. <laughs> yeah, it's already well, started. There's, yeah. there's only so much you want to do when you know they're digging it up more. So. Uh, the other thing I'll say is uh, storm drains, which yeah. are also many that's are yeah, covered, yeah. and so yeah, that's true too. Because um, um, once the snow it's starts, it's hard to, to actually find where they are now, but yeah. they're going to be needed soon. So, <laughs> so they'll go in. The water will start coming, and instead of going in from people's roofs, will be coming in through their basements. So, but th that's the only comment I have on that. But Bob, in the case where a fire hydrant is buried and a neighbor knows it's buried, but they, they just are unable to dig it up, should just, just call, call the fire uh, department. Yeah, call the police or the DPW. Call 911. No, yeah. No. Just call nine four four one two one two. Yep. And the dispatchers can figure out. You know, by and large, either fire and or DPW goes around and does that yep. depending on the timing of things. Right now, the fire hydrant should be clear. So if there's anything that's not clear, right. we should want to know that. You know, I'm thinking of my drive around. I think I noticed one that wasn't as clear as it probably should have been. Yeah, it would be. We good know where every fire hydrant should be. <laughs> not all of them have those finder spires. Absolutely not. Right, it would be right. good if they. I could think that was an Eagle Scout project. Oh, was it? Oh, was yeah. it? Okay. From a few years back, huh. and it didn't do every one. Just yeah. the ones yeah. you'd likely not know were there. So. Okay. That actually is a good suggestion for a future projects for project, yeah. those that weren't identified. Mm -hmm. identified. Yeah. But, uh, thanks for your comments. So, thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Um, so, Bob. Over to you. Um, I really don't have much to add other than, um, you know, in addition to the snow and ice deficit, I believe we will be asking the annual town meeting for a big chunk of money for potholes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we just ask everyone to be as patient as they can. Be careful when you drive. There's no question that there's potholes out there now, but plenty of them are right now filled up with snow and ice, so you don't notice. When they melt, you'll notice. Paul is the one that will find out the most often because they all contact her. Is there a little... Um, App system working? Yeah, and, and that's, I was just going to get to that. Um, you know, see, click, fix on the main website home page on the left hand side is the easiest way to communicate with us. All right, I'm telling people. Most that. people still call Paula, and that's fine. Um, I don't know if you saw over the uh, the last week, Boston has the same, we're, we're using Boston. Right. Yeah. They inadvertently deleted 9,000 requests. <laughs> inadvertently. <laughs> yeah. And it was only a fraction of their requests. <laughs> now, we won't get 9,000 in the next 100 years, I don't think so. Um, but we were, Jeff and I were just discussing that system this morning. And you never know when you introduce something how much it's going to be used. Mm -hmm. But I remember us being really surprised at how low the usage was in Melrose. You'd think mm -hmm. there's yeah. no reason. I mean, Melrose is just a little bit bigger of a city than us, not a lot different. Um, and then we thought, well, People in Reading tend to reach out and contact the government more often for mm -hmm. things. Our usage is not that much higher than Melrose's. Well, the so other we'll need to advertise the it better. The other thing is that the people strength. who would use it are going to be the people who are younger. Yeah. And they probably don't know that it exists yet. Um, that's probably true. And the new administrative services director will have his hands full. That's certainly one of them. His or her. Um, yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, it's kind of a demographic thing. You know, you're going to have younger people. Who I agree. You know, if, if you have a smartphone, that's the easiest way to right. use it. There's an app. Mm -hmm. You download it. You're off, off to the races. But, you know, we'd really like to know because we have to evaluate in the next year or so whether to keep it. It's free now. It's a grant. It's not going to be free. Right. I think it's a year from December, and we need to decide in advance. So it's a good tool, but so far not a huge amount of data is populating well, it. And like I said, we've just started them, right? Yeah. I mean, it hasn't oh, yeah. been around for that long. So. Six months. And so when is it going to be free until December? Uh, a year from next December. A year from next December. Think we'll so. have it. Okay, so, so we'll have to decide next spring. But there's a deal on the table right now if we want it. <laughs> so we really should ramp up trying to get get that used and, and to see I, if it's going to be useful this morning I said you know it, yeah this, sounds, this, this spring would be a great time it doesn't, to do and it doesn't sound like something we want to move away from because if anything no, it's only going to go more in that direction I agree yeah and we you know we have various methods of communication um, in one of the next two bi-monthly communications I'm sure that'll go out for the spring and just a reminder another page you know here's the way to do it it's easy and, and the beauty of it is you don't have to remember to call town hall when the town hall is open if that's the way you would normally go. You do it whenever you do it. It also removes a lever, too, on, on the town side of things, where they have to take a call, categorize it, and put it somewhere. Call, it's always going to be there on the data. Yeah. <laughs> She'll be the biggest advocate. Yeah. Um, the other I thing have, it, I have told people to, <laughs> to use yeah. it. Or I tell them that's how I'm going to record it. Yeah. 
And the other thing for the person's benefit is they can then follow it. Yeah. And, right. and, and we're accountable. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, we never got the message. Well, it's right there. It's right there. And, <laughs> and actually, it not only follow that, but if someone else has a similar complaint, I got an email because I used it once. Yeah. Um, and I got an email, hey, thought this might be something you'd like to follow. Someone, someone was someone talking about something. someone else had something. I go, oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. They sent me an email saying, this, we thought you might like to follow this as well. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, the only other thing was, um, you know, it was said last night, but I'd certainly like to repeat it. Um, we're all very appreciative of town meeting members being so tolerant of the frequency with which we meet. Do we have one next month? Um, no. <laughs> town Council is sure. I forgot to remind them of the March town meeting, but I said there isn't one. <laughs> no. But it's like the first month in how, how many that we yeah. haven't had a town well, meeting? It's we had, a little crazy. We had September, November, January, February yeah. Yeah. since the last unreal. annual. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of work that goes into that, depending on the circumstances, but I'm most appreciative of town meeting members coming out. We had a good crowd last night, 140, 150 people. Yeah. That's as good a turnout as we've had. Um, you know, and I certainly congratulate the schools for doing what I thought was a really nice presentation. I it thought the, uh, the chair's introduction was spot on, and then John did a nice presentation. They were just, here's the deal. Yeah, yeah. But they did a, did a good job. So that's all I you don't have anything else to update on us, us on? We've got a lot to talk about in the warrant, but. Yeah. <laughs> can we call a recess or get these folks in? Yeah, you want to oh, let yeah, the police swear in? That's not a, that's not a bad in. idea. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we can start all early on that. Mm -hmm. They can start any time. Okay. Well, then we're going to have another. Mm. It's not going to take us a half an hour. Uh, so we're going to have some free time. Oh, we got nothing we can move up? Marcy, we well, can we do could minutes. 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 Yeah. C-click yeah. fix. C-click fix. And it's Check. on the website? Yeah, let me find yeah. it here. Yeah, you probably get it through the you app store. Get it right store through your app store, app store too. Yeah. If you have Apple. Yeah. Right here on the home page. Right there. This is really what you become a selectman to do. I know it is. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, that's because nice. all you nice. were standing out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Tells you where the hot air is. <laughs> 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 Let's see. Yeah, it's a good question. So I'd like to thank the board for, again, finding time in their very busy schedule for us to do our annual, not annual, but our traditional badge pinning. Um, you know, we, we do the badge pinnings whenever we have a new high, new high hire, uh, new officer hired, or promotions. And in this particular case, uh, the teacher just off some Matt Batcher. Off some Matt, uh, Matt Batcher um, has recently graduated from the uh, Lowell Police Academy. Um, interesting enough, Matt has actually been an employee for the town of Reading for ten and a half years mm -hmm. already, coming on eleven years now. Matt was a dispatcher uh, for ten and a half years and, and uh, realized that he really aspired to become a police officer and, and you know took the bull by the horns recently and got his uh, associate's degree and showed a keen interest in becoming an officer and uh, did very well on uh, um, the testing, um, the preliminary testing and the interview process. And we already knew his work ethic, mm -hmm. and we knew he was calm under pressure. You've mm -hmm. seen him do that a number of times, he, uh, and uh, we're very happy to have him uh, join the ranks of the police department. He went to the Lowell Police Academy for six months, just graduated in November. He's been through his field training at this point. Uh, in, the, in the Lowell Police Academy, he was awarded the um, Combat Pistol Course Award, which there are only a handful of awards uh, awarded at the, um, at the academy for individual achievement. Matt was able to be the recipient of one of those awards. We're very proud. We've been very fortunate in a number of hires that we've had at different academies that brought home awards, which makes me uh, really good when I feel good when I go to the chief's meetings because I can <laughs> uh, sit there and say that the officers are all winning the awards. <laughs> I don't do anything, they do all the work. So, but, um, so uh, you know, as is the tradition with the badge pinning, uh, Matt's wife, Nicole, is going to uh, pin him um, in, uh, Uber, and invite Nicole up to do that now. And try not to stab him. <laughs> Very good. Right. And Matt's got 
family and friends here, so you know, usually we give them a minute to introduce their family and friends that are here. Uh, this is my wife, Nicole. How you doing? Uh, we have a almost one-year-old daughter. She is somewhere else watching. <laughs> <laughs> She's supposed to be sleeping. Uh, my younger brother, Brian. How you doing? Uh, my younger sister, Jenna. Mm -hmm. Brian's girlfriend, Jane May, as well. Oh. And from the police department, Deputy Chief Segala is here. Um, the detective Iapika seated there in plain clothes, and then uh, Sergeant Santaski, Officer Caitlin Dooley, Officer Eric Roschke, seated as Sergeant Pat Silva. Um, I say school resource officer Mike Bulo and Detective Saunders is taking pictures. Usually I miss somebody. Is there anybody I miss? <laughs> Can you sneak anybody in on you? No, all right. No, I almost always miss somebody, but I didn't miss anybody. So, but again, uh, you know, appreciate the board's uh, time and, and allowing us to do these. The, the uh, officers, it means a lot to the officers and the, and the uh, people in the police department to be have the opportunity to come up and see the board and, and show you know the recognition for their achievements. This so, is terrific. We we really appreciate actually having the opportunity to recognize you and uh, welcome aboard in your new role. Yeah, absolutely. Congratulations. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Actually review the warrant. I mean, there's yeah. a hearing at eight, so okay. you can't really close it, but mm -hmm. can review it's, it's it. probably worth discussing that. it. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, it should be in your tonight handout because we just got it. It's hot off the press. Mm -hmm. Let's see. This the includes the last minute changes that had to be done as of last night. <laughs> uh, it actually includes last minute changes from five o'clock. Oh, perfect. We didn't see anything in my inbox. I said, oh, it's going up to the wire. Yeah, we did <clears throat> absolutely go to the wire. Yeah. I couldn't have told you how many articles it would be till about five o'clock. Wow. Um, there's an outline on, I'm starting on page five. Okay. Um, I'll go through the outline and, and make some comments. Um, there's actually a number of reports this year. Um, I don't know what the board's feelings are, and I haven't talked to John as to who is going to deliver the state of the town. The new sheriff. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the uh, next one is Mark Doxer will do the uh, uh, financial overview. Uh, David Hutchinson has asked us to have five or ten minutes to give an update on the library project, <coughs> which I think is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then tonight later we'll discuss the firearms motion and whatever actions we're going to take, and I think it would be appropriate to update the town meeting as was requested. Those are the only reports I'm aware of. Um, at this point, I'm not aware of an, any instructional motions, uh, although I wouldn't be surprised if some pop up. Um, town Council suggested that <clears throat> we, we formally in the Charter say we must have a five-year capital plan. Mm -hmm. We actually have a 10. Mm -hmm. Technically, we have a 20 or a 30. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We normally vote 10 years at a time. In an annual town meeting, we vote this 10 years and then later that 10 years oh. by rolling it forward a year. Mm -hmm. And we usually have two articles. He said, why do you do that? And I said, well, we've always done it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a good reason. <laughs> it's, a, it's always my standard answer. And he said, well, does that make any sense? I said, of course not. Um, so we, we actually had some discussion about this and just really simplified it even more than he wanted. We're just going to vote on a capital plan from now on of whatever length it is. Who cares? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the one we'll vote on at this annual town meeting will be 11 years. That'll cover the, the current year and then the next 10, so we're all set. Right. Um, there will be in the sewer enterprise fund, just so you know, a substantial capital request, 500 plus thousand, uh, to be funded with reserves. 
there's uh, 10 sewer stations scheduled to be redone. Mm -hmm. One of them was scheduled for FY16. Um, the first one scheduled for FY15 is going out to bid shortly. And um, we discussed it, and it was far more economic to put two of them out to bid at once. Mm -hmm. So instead of using any reserves next year and putting in that in next year's budget, we're going to ask April Town Meeting to fund it 100% with reserves mm -hmm. and then exclude it from next year's budget. Um, the long and short of it is we have almost two and a half or three million dollars of reserves, so the half million is, is in barely the enterprise. Yeah, in, right. in the sewer enterprise fund. So that's fine. Um, and you'll be pleased to see when we discuss rates, um, we're going to have close to a 0% net water sewer change. Um, you know, maybe a percent, maybe a half percent. And then huh? if you eliminate the discount, it's, you know, that much better. And part of the reason is because of the sewer move. Um, the schools got money to study their retaining wall uh, in one of the past winter town meetings. I've, I've forgotten which one. We may potentially have something for annual town meeting. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that was a pretty big number, too. The estimate was half a million to a million for mm -hmm. repairs. So that would be another free cash. Yeah. Um, in terms of the next article, which is the budget amendment. So do you think that's going to surface at this next meeting? I hope so. But I, I don't know because I'm sure they would like to do the work in the summer if they could. So is that going to be a free cash request? Almost for sure. Uh, there's no, no recourse toward going back to the. I don't want to get into executive ma matters. Honestly, they don't exist anymore. Okay. That's the fairest answer. Um, Actually, not unusual. No. No. Plus, it was a long time ago. <laughs> More than 10 years. Um, the next article is changing the budget and. Um, <laughs> you know, in, in addition to a couple of capital items, um, the snow and ice budget's a, a big deal, obviously. Last night I met with FinCom after town meeting and they gave authorization to deficit spend, not like they had any choice. We're about 550000 in the hole, over budget. Um, right now, with no FEMA or MEMA reimbursements, we're at an all-time high for snow expenditure, barely. Um, the budget is like 625 and we're up around 1150 something. They're going to throw in some of the reserve fund to help cover that? Or? Um, so at yeah. annual town meeting, we will not have enough surpluses to not need free cash for snow and ice. That I'm sure about. We have some surpluses in the benefits area. In a different year, under different circumstances, you know, we'd always have the option, and I might recommend, let's put it into OPEB. If we've saved 200000 in health insurance, let's just throw it into OPEB. Yeah. But this year, I can't see doing that. We're spending, you know, fair amount of free cash yes. in a short amount of time, so I, I won't say to do that. Um, but almost undoubtedly, we're going to need a half a million dollars of free cash just for the operating budget for snow and ice, and hopefully everything else takes care of each other. Because I am aware of another hundred dollars to $150,000 expenses um, related to sick leave buyback for a lot of retirements that are happening in, in progress. So there are liabilities that will be eliminated. Um, I think our free cash position at when it's finally certified next August, you know, I've, I've said in the past I'll stop predicting it, but I don't see how it can be higher. <laughs> I mean, just think of how much we've used this year and how much we may use over the next, you know, town meeting. And between that and balancing the budget, we'll have used four million bucks. You know, we so, had a. I mean, theoretically, that could be right down to the floor. Of well, the FinCom's new floor is, is probably seven psychologically, so we may well be down close to that floor. It will be seven to eight, I think. So, you know, we're balancing a budget in FY16 with a million seven in free cash. If all that turns out to be right, we can't afford the million seven in FY17. So, it's going to be a real tough budget discussion that's going to have to start this summer. John and I have talked a little. Um, Article 6 is uh, something we generally try to do every annual town meeting. We did get one of the smart growth payments. It's been sitting around in, ca in free cash. Uh, we'd like to move it into the smart growth stabilization fund. And, you know, with the board, I'd like to sit down in the future and go over two different funds of money we have to see what purposes we'd like to spend it on. It should be related to the reason we got it. So we have the permitting revolving <coughs> fund, which is three specific big projects. And then we have the smart growth fund, which the permitting one is 700,000 roughly. This one's a lot smaller. It's a couple hundred thousand. 
but we really ought to think of obviously one-time expenses that we can use that would be something we'd like to do anyways, but we don't want to use free cash for it. So we'll have that discussion probably in the spring. Article 7 is, <clears throat> you know, we did budget for an OPEB contribution. I think we should continue to make it. Uh, with a discussion with FinCom, we have started to level fund it, so it's not going to increase every year. We're just going to stop it. I think it's 500000 and that's what the actuaries have used in their assumption. And, and again, for what it's worth, it's all, it's all paperwork. It's, in some sense, not that real. But the fact that we have started to fund it is better than most communities and actuarially gave us a huge advantage for what a liability is. Again, I don't know, it's not, it's not tangible. So was that, would that have an impact on our bond rate? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's one of the things that could yeah. be a driver. Yeah. I mean, our, our liability went from $95 million to $68 million mm -hmm. just because we did this. We only stuck like a million and a half in, but the fact that we were making a plan so and far sticking to it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and at some point it's going to be state law, so you're not going to be able to just walk. Well, away from you're going to see more. You're seeing towns all over California now that are bellying up yeah. around those liabilities. <laughs> yeah, it's stunning. Uh, next is accept the complete streets program. Mm -hmm. this, this has also been a kind of a lot of discussion with uh, town council. Um, as is usual, the state has launched a program with no funding and no rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to run for governor. Well, we have a so. national award in that, so. <laughs> yes, we do. We should be right up at the front of the line, right? <coughs> we should, for the we should be. We met all the criteria. <laughs> but but what, <laughs> what the state has said, at least informally, is for the next year, we're not having any rules at all. If you want money, just ask. Okay. But we figured it was still a much better idea to ask town meeting to do this, mm -hmm. because then we really have to be at the front of the line, you know, no matter mm -hmm. what anything. So in some ways, this is kind of board the play. Well, we've seen a lot of this already. Yeah. And we've had multiple presentations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's the way we've tried to do business for a few years anyways. So yeah. if someone wants to give us money for the way we're operating, you know, that's fine. Yeah. Um, public Ways, you had that presentation, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the uh, residents and George uh, a, few meet a couple meetings ago. We have four streets that meet the first criteria and are fairly, hopefully, easy to Get through. Have you had a lot of play on that? Um, I, I have. I, I actually got a lot of compliments that George did a nice job. Obviously, I didn't see it. I don't know. Uh, but a number of people that have been in touch with me actually for two years said uh, it was worth the wait. You know, it was a really well done presentation. Now I understand the process. Oh, that's good. Um, you know, and it's people who wish they were in the first list, but they're not quite. Right. It's that second group up around Roma Lane, Wood End, Dividends School, mm -hmm. um, where developers just walked away and left money. But that's a little more complicated for us to just say, yeah, go ahead. That's hopefully a November town meeting or maybe a next year. We don't know. But yeah, I think that worked out pretty well. Um, we have an offer on the table for extending a rubbish contract. Uh, the last town meeting authorization uh, runs out in 15 months, I think. And what we're going to ask for is probably a 10-year with a 10-year extension. You know, the deal on the table is good, but I want to really understand what the market is because I think the market is a lot different now than 10 years ago when the assumption was it's going to go up 8 to 10% a year. Now they're glad to have your business. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, you know, for one thing, our tonnage is way down because of recycling, so I know it's cheaper. Um, but I, I have a feeling this has become an, an even more competitive business, and so the prices are a little bit better. So we'll have to decide. Um, you know, if town meeting shall authorize this, we'll have to decide uh, whether we want to go through a formal procurement process and an RFP or just extend it. And we'll do some market work to figure that out. Um, the so, animal, oh, so when will you do that market work? Would that? Uh, after town meeting, so. Oh, okay, it would be after May, town June, meeting. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see any sense of doing it just in case it's not approved. Um, the animal control bylaw is interesting. <laughs> Um, it's more than half of your warrant. It's 11 pages out of 20, or I don't remember. It's, it's huge. Um, to s summarize it as the best I can, there's three issues. One is the AG disapproved a portion of it last time. I didn't know that until about a year ago. Um, the part that was disapproved was um, the appeals process. The, um, 
appeals committee that was set up, we had to change some things. The AG's office didn't like that. So that's number one. Um, and number two is it's an impossibly illogical bylaw to understand or follow. Um, you know, oh well. Number three is state law has changed underneath us on this topic since town meeting approved the bylaw that we do have in place. So there's three things moving. So what we decided to do today, and this was at five o'clock, was it was important enough to change the thing that, ta that the AG disapproved now. Mm -hmm. Let's get it done at this town meeting. So even though it's a large document and a lot of text, the changes are extremely non-substantive other than that one area. There's a couple clarifications, a couple words. They thought it was just easy to reproduce the whole bylaw and throw it in there. So it's in there with, with the one clarification. But, but I absolutely guarantee you, changes. you will see this again in November because I already have a draft of some of the changes Ray would like. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought the zoning bylaw was his dream come true until he read this. <laughs> he said, this is the you worst. for his retirement? <laughs> for his enjoyment. He enjoys this stuff. I don't understand. <clears throat> he said, I don't know how you could possibly follow this bylaw should you ever need to. And th th thankfully, we don't have to. Be um, plus, there's the state law part. So, you know, I, I don't like going to town meeting with something that's incomplete. It's like we just wait. But this was important enough to split it in two parts and say, look, this is a real simple thing. We really need to fix this now. There's a bigger issue that we'll come back to in May. So. And, and I do believe the board is going to have to have one or two either public meetings or hearings on this because this will be an interesting topic. You know, people love their dogs. And I don't know what material changes will be made, but you can be sure that you'll have the room full you know, when, when we discuss this. And I could not see us doing that in the next month before no. annual town meeting. It just wasn't going to happen. Uh, associate members, <clears throat> it's a fairly simple bylaw. If you actually turn to that, I. Mm. I want to have you read it. Which page is that? Uh, 20 something. Let me find 23. it. Yeah, 23. <clears throat> oh. um, what town council took away from you know, what I asked them to do is the board of selectmen right now are the only ones that appoint associate members, so that's what we'll put in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. If you know the library trustees or the school committee want to start appointing associate members, we'll add that to the bylaw. That seemed like a reasonable place to start. Mm -hmm. I have got some interest from a couple of the committees or a couple members on the committees that really want to make sure that we do something at town meeting so that the associate membership does not lapse. Mm -hmm. So if, if this is approved, we'll then have to set up a process before July 1st to allow you to discuss in whatever format works best, either with all committees at once or individually with committees, who wants to have associate members and why. So we'll have to develop some sort of mechanism for all this. Bob, there are a lot of... Uh, Changes made to that section as we debated the charter. Mm -hmm. what, what survived in regard to? Uh, um, not very much. All the controversial stuff went away, and it just basically yeah. said there will be a bylaw. Now, this bylaw is very widely mm -hmm. written. I expect it could be amended on town meeting floor to specify, and we did it that way on purpose. But if it isn't amended on town meeting floor, you're going to need a policy for under right. what circumstances do you right. allow or encourage associate memberships or not. I think we should argue that's the way to go rather than micro okay. tweak it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because if you be tweak prepared. it, you'll always find someone that's right. unhappy. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that could take up any, anywhere from a medium to a large amount of your time before July 1st, if you mm -hmm. think of the interest in some of the boards and committees. Yeah. And, and especially with the voting aspect. I think that's, that's the key. Um, article 13 is a <coughs> petitioned article that Mr. Brown put forward, and he knows it's one of the two that he put out that I don't like. <laughs> uh, it was something that was debated during the Charter Committee's work over, you know, a year, over a year. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he feels strongly about it. I'll let him explain it. I just don't know that it's logical, and I don't really understand what it achieves. Is this because citizens can now, with 200... Signatures, call um, time I in. don't know Ten. if he knew that anyways. No, call time hmm. well, 200. 10 for a warrant. Or 10 for a warrant. You know, it, it right. makes sense to me that there's a minimum time frame so you don't surprise it on people. Yeah. But he wanted oh, the maximum. Yeah. He didn't want anyone dragging their feet. Right. Mm. 
<laughs> and okay, I can understand the concepts, but the difference between 14 and 28 is really narrow. Mm -hmm. you know, at least make it another month. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, let's see, 14. We have some interest in, uh, you know, in our water tower, uh, water tank, in uh, an additional cell company that's not up there. There's some work that needs to be done by them and then by us. Um, we're going to ask for a lengthy lease, and this will also probably be uh, two 10-year leases mm -hmm. for this. Um, we haven't had negotiations yet because I really wanted to make sure this article got formed first. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably begin negotiations closer to town meeting, and you know I'll, I'll fill the board in as that happens, but. Uh, suffice to say, the revenue we get will not go down from the current lease uh, situation we have. And I would also anticipate a second location fairly soon, possibly by next November town meeting, we'll add a second location, because uh, at least three of the cell companies have asked for another location. We'll see how that goes. Um, I think the rest of the articles are, are fairly standard. 15 is dispose of surplus. Mm -hmm. Ray thought it was funny that we did that. <laughs> oh, really? I said, oh, you should have been there for the time we declared a pile of dirt surplus. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. 16 and 17 are both debtor authorizations. The first is just for annual MWRA sewer uh, loans, interest-free. The second is it's not petitioned, but it's the Board of Cemetery Trustees to build a cemetery garage. I've, I've discussed that with you in the past. Um, 18 is the annual renewal of the housing trust fund. 19 is the annual renewal of all the revolving accounts. And you can see the inspection revolving fund has a $200,000 annual expenditure limit, and that's one of the ones I'd like to talk to you about. Uh, Article 20 is just um, <coughs> the budget. Uh, 21 is Chapter 90 for next year, and 22 is, you know, if town meeting members haven't been able to attend all these town meetings, then the precincts have to decide what to do. And Ray, Ray also thought that was interesting. He's not familiar with any town meeting that throws people off a town meeting. Oh, really? Or he even has a provision to do so. <laughs> he said, do you actually do this? I said, yeah, occasionally. He said, wow. We've <laughs> actually done it a fair amount of times recently. Yeah. One yeah, and I, through, what, yeah. what winds up happening is you have people who run mm. for a single issue yeah. and they come and then when that issue is done mm. they don't come back again right. and so you know it, you kick them off you mm. can many, free many, up a spot for somebody else if it's a full precinct right and then many come back and plead their case before their caucus and get yeah. put back on right. or have their name mm -hmm. taken off the removal place. Right. and I explained how I think it was last year at the annual town meeting there's a lot of confusion between what a yes and a no vote meant. It, it the, is the very The precincts confusing. treated yeah. them all differently or <laughs> two, two different ways. I do remember that. There was yeah. a lot of confusion. Yeah. Names, got, yeah. names got taken back and put forward. Yeah. Yeah. Laura ought to give them some guidance. <clears throat> yeah, just you want them in or out mm -hmm. instead of yes or no, just in or out. Yeah. Um, so that's the warrant. It's We only deferred one or two articles that might have appeared in front of you to November. Um, none of them are meaningful. One of them is to uh, discontinue some paper streets. There's no urgency to it. We'll see that in November. The other is part two of the animal control bylaw. Mm -hmm. And then I, I understand that zoning is coming forward next November in some way, shape, or form. So the paper streets isn't ready to go yet? I mean, I wasn't happy with we it. We started no. talking about that. I know. It's been you three know, years. Been, yeah, I was yeah. going to say, Peter was still here when we yeah. were talking about this. So yeah, no. It's quite a while ago. Um, the engineers weren't ready. So we could have taken a chance. I said, you don't do these things well, at the last no, minute. No, you don't want to do no. it last minute because. Yeah. yeah. So we covered all the capital issues in here? Um, not individually, but. Um, Generally? Yeah, Article 5 would be the one to amend the current year's budget, which would address your issue on capital. What, what is your issue on capital? John, I'm not sure that I'm familiar there's, with there's that. There's some more activity down at Birch oh. Meadow that the rec committee is interested mm -hmm. in. So, because no, I'm having a meeting with them. I just, sure. Yeah. You know, article 4, down. we'd amend the capital plan, and then Article right. 5, we'd fund it. Okay. Mm. Got it. Um, my guess is uh, this is a two-night town meeting. I, I don't know if there's anything in there really controversial. We'll see. 
Uh, I don't know if the budget's very controversial. I, I would think less so than past years since the school committee budget is balanced yeah, mm. uh, and the town budget is balanced. You know, nothing's perfect, but. Well, you know, any time recently, any time that they're, I mean, we've got that, that animal control thing in here. That could turn into a bigger conversation. That well, could, hopefully that's could, why just well, that's doing one simple thing. A, a simple. Will, yeah. and then we'll say, you know, we understand there's a lot of pent up emotions. Next November is your time, because that's when there might be some changes made. In fact, there will be some changes made, just because state law has changed. Well, that's the only thing in here that you know yeah. concerns me about lengthening the meeting, because past experience mm -hmm. over the yeah. last two years has been anytime there's fodder. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's lots of dialogue. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Article 1, uh, I, yeah. did uh, the state have to approve the verbiage we put in for the charter, or did we just write um, that? And I won't say approved, but I will yeah. say it was sent to the AG for comment, and no comment came back. So yeah. it's good that we could summarize it like that. What, what, yeah, so what that's is on page so 10. Page yeah, of tonight's. That's the form that question one will take, uh, the approval of the charter uh, amendments. It's a, it's a nice summary, I think, uh, rather than yeah. blow by blow. Oh. And, and, and we're also going to write a cover letter. And the cover letter will be more than this, but will mm -hmm. contain at least those bullet points. Mm -hmm. And we're st still working on that. So e each household or each voter has to receive a mailed copy? What is it, 9,000? They couldn't household it? They yeah, can't it, household it. Is, yeah, it is household. Oh. Every every person, not every household. No, it's it's every registered voter. Oh it's, it's a colossal waste of time and money. I yeah. know. Wow. Yeah. I wish there was an option. There is no option. Um, I would. I what I said was it would be a lot cheaper and people would be a lot happier if we could somehow send everyone a letter saying I will drive a limo to your house and deliver it if you want it. That does sound like the household count, actually. What am I yeah. saying? 17,000 voters, nine, about 9,000. I think households. it's the households where there are voters. That's what it is, because the households is like 9,000. Um, but what what's the budget have, for this? So for if you have two or three voters in the house, they get one. one. They get one. 15,000 to print it? Um, we, we haven't got the price yet. We're okay. printing one price yet. Oh, postage um, came in. That's postage was 13000 That's right. The wow. The envelopes and some supplies were 1500 Yeah. The copying on there tomorrow, that could be up to about 10000 So it's like a twenty-two, twenty-three $23,000. Yeah. Wow. Oh my God. Which will repeat. And I don't mind changes. spending the money for something, but you know what a large portion of these mm -hmm. is going Nobody's right back into recycling. Nobody's going to see them right it's in those red buckets. Right, it's going to yep. go directly into the right recycling, into recycling bin. Yep. It's just a shame. It, it is. really is. <clears throat> and it lends to the, you know, government doesn't know what it's doing at aspect. Mm -hmm. And after all that, we get a 15 to 20 percent turnout. Yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. We uh, we pled our case for a month with the AG. Uh, we have all this electronic media. Couldn't mm -hmm. we just communicate with everyone and have them available at the police station? Right. We can get a printer that's ready to print up another thousand as we need it. No. Wow. This is state law. Okay. Uh, Sounds which, like that's a good state law to change, isn't it? Well, it's also... A printing lobby. Yeah, it does. <laughs> don't, don't roll that up. <laughs> you know, it's also a reason why you want to make sure your martial law, your charter changes together. Mm -hmm. So we won't be going to another charter change for gender <laughs> neutral for the, the foreseeable future. Yeah. So that's it. Wow. That's all I have on the warrant. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Anybody have any questions on, on those? Uh, so, Bob, um, right now, what are we up to in terms of free cash uses? Like, there's a number of things we know are going to be happening and coming from free cash, right? And yeah, we kind of talk about them independently, but it, it would be good probably to just kind of list them out. So we well, know there's one point. Two for the. It's one point seven. Right. Balance, Next year's to balance, budget. FY16. To balance the budget, right? Mm -hmm. One point two. One point two. two. One point two forty. Mm -hmm. It's five fifty. Right. And, uh, Although forty of that's going to come back. Yeah. yeah. So one point. So call one two isn't that? 
The other wild card is um, we're using free cash to balance for state aid if it doesn't come in at plus two and a half percent. Mm -hmm. That could be worth a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So you're you're about in the three and a half to three and well, three and quarters. Well, the retaining million. wall, how much do we think that's going to be? Uh, let's say five hundred and be really optimistic. It could okay. be more. How old is that wall? Ten years, eleven years. Yeah. Really? And and there's there's two parts to it. If you look yeah. at the stairway. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I got this right. To the left of the stairway, we made them rebuild it because yeah. we okay. could see. Twice, twice you could see yeah. that it was. It was bad. Yes, Catania was all over. I don't know the details of why we didn't have more of a conversation on the right, but that's the thing that's collapsing. That's what's failing now. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was built with supplies you would buy at Home Depot to do a two-foot home wall. Uh, oops. It's a major wall. Yeah, yes. it's a major wall. That's where they've got goodness. all the cars parked on top of it. Thank I'm sure, I'm sure they got a good price right. on it at the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. quite sure. <laughs> Is there anything else? So that's about half the free cash we have. Is there anything else that we know of, Bob, that's kind of on the, you know, we've said, oh, that's going to be free cash. The, and then, no. then you said state aid, there could be a plug there. I mean, Snow there are ice. other facilities Snow and issues. Ice is the other thing, right? Well, so that's that's that in for half. That could increase. It could increase. And yeah, so, well, it so for example, probably this, will, right? Probably will. This warrant that uh, is being presented on behalf of by the cemetery committee, where does, does that come from a capital account? I don't think they specify. Yeah, they did, two million bucks. But they didn't specify the source. Though, right? the source. So we'd mm -hmm. borrow. Borrow. Yeah. Um, you know, we're down to four million of free cash from eight, and then we'll have some kind of regeneration of some sort, I would mm -hmm. hope. Yeah, you know, last year I was saying it earlier. Is that, but it's you know, probably not going to be more than four million. How do we get more than right. four million? In? Yeah. Well, last year we got two million, and we thought maybe we'll get a million. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we get a million or two regenerated. So, you know, best case I suppose is we're up to six million, but we used to have eight. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, again, I've said this in the past and been wrong. I'm sure I'll be wrong again. I don't see how our free cash can grow, right? Based on how we're spending. And I'm not objecting to how we're spending it, right? But you know, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> there are some other one-time projects that you know we've talked about. Not all of them are in the capital plan. Killam School certainly comes to mind. Um, you know, that was in the capital plan for a small amount, and then it grew to six million, I think, at one point. When you think of the ADA and the sprinklers and the windows and the roof, or I think it was roof. That won't be free cash. No. But it's also not in the current capital plan, so you know it's not something. Six million, and that's a what would be classified as a minor um, upgrade or renovation. Well, <clears throat> my guess is certainly I would advocate for if we're going to really talk about Killam and six million, we instead talk about Killam and ten or fifteen million. That's and exactly what the floor. Thinking. That's exactly where I was going with yeah. that. I mean that that yeah. seems like not a too much money to spend on, on, on a smaller term. You know, they're going to have portables there in the next five years. The committee does its work, and we come back and say, you know, one of the options is building some of the schools we have larger. Mm -hmm. And those, unfortunately, none of those are small cost items because you don't just add a second floor. We didn't mm -hmm. build them that way. No. No. Coolidge is the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have space to build this way, then right. you go that way, but it's expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's probably a couple of years away. Realistically, you know, it almost seems like that is calling for a strategic plan of its own. Um, you know. Well, we have a building committee about to be formed. We have the working group of the schools. I'm sure they ought to just talk. And, you know, and we so have. What I think, what I think is going on there. I mean, Dan and I are sitting on that um, space. Um, it seems to me that it needs to be more of a strategic planning committee. Than okay. Than a space committee. I mean, you know, because yeah. mm -hmm. frankly, the, you know, the thing that was approved by town meeting last night, I think, was a good solution to the problem. And I and yeah, and, but it never it never even surfaced no. at the space at, at that committee meeting. Oh, because oh. Yeah. it was a it was a timing <laughs> issue. And, yeah. um, and you're meant to look at a long term no, we solution, and this was not a long term solution. Correct. So. You know, and you know, and it just hap was happenstantial that there was a committee meeting on December 14th, but they weren't going to have the numbers yeah. for oh, the kindergarten so. until December 19th, and so you know, and then there was no committee meeting plan for. Jan I mean, it was yeah. really kind of a collision of things. But yeah. the point is, 
and this was raised last night by actually a number of speakers who were both for and against, is that what this is all calling for when you yeah. do a near-term solution like this is a, you know, a strategic planning process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and two different people mentioned the 20-year plan. One of them accused me of needing to do it. I remember that. And, you know, it goes back to the presentation you know I'm thinking about from yeah. MAPC. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all part of your 2020 group. And, it, and it, that one by itself is going to morph into a much wider community discussion. I think right. So. It's going to drag in the master plan, which mm -hmm. needs to be yep. redone. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's been a, be a long time discussion. since the master plan was done. It's about Hasn't nine it? years, and it's ten years. Oh, is it years. only nine? I think yeah. it was more than that. Uh, it, something was updated less than ten years ago with the idea every ten years they're supposed to do it. Yeah. How much was done, I just I, don't remember. It might have been 20 years ago. Yeah, that I was, was going to say, I think that it was a real, uh, it seems to me like the, the core number is yeah. longer ago than that. But, you know, we were talking about this this morning that you couldn't very well stand up at town meeting last night and say, you know, the solution is we need less school children. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> that is one of the solutions. It doesn't mean that any individual kid is a bad kid and should be thrown out of town. It just means you need to strategically plan your town and your mm -hmm. real estate and your mm -hmm. assets and and decide. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. But... If you want to attract young families with kids, you're going to need more school space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're going to want to attract seniors, you're going to need different kind of housing for them. You know, come up with a well, strategy. Well, you want a, your seniors to stay in town to sell right. their homes to young families. Right. There's a certain kind of housing right. you need to, you need yeah. to go on Well, and there's, there's probably some kind of optimal balance, too. And so if you, know, if you can figure out what that optimal balance is, you know, then you can, you know, allocate your funds and do your planning in that direction. Mm -hmm. One thing that was learned in the pay and class study, I, I've always known it without knowing the sense of it, <clears throat> was um, we have a lot of kids in Reading, school age kids in Reading, compared to most towns of our size. <clears throat> so they, the, the guy who did the pay and class surveyed the 23 communities mm -hmm. just with a simple question. Tell me how much money you spend on schools and how much you spend on towns in your annual budget on mm -hmm. average. Forget benefits, forget all capital and all that stuff. Just give me those two numbers. I'm sure the data is not <coughs> perfect. I'm sure there's things we could look at and say, oh, this is wrong. But what it said was, if Reading was the average community with the average amount of kids, we'd be spending, I think it was $8 million bucks more on the town, hmm. period. So there would be an $8 million shift out of schools into the town. Just because the percentage is because of the so, so what's, many kids. What's the general percentage? What, I, I can't what remember it offhand. Are? I honestly I didn't believe it. It was closer to 50 50. Mm -hmm. And I looked at a bunch of them like Melrose, and you know, not so much Melrose, but cities typically spend much less per pupil, you know, whatever the state mandates. They don't usually add much more. Mm -hmm. Our, you know, if John's watching now, he's going to get in his car and drive down here. I was going to say that's expert. different than the story we usually hear. So. But, you know, per pupil, our, our, our spending is low. There's some good reasons for that. But the point is we add money to what the state would dictate as a minimum, quite a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the answer is, this, this, and this is in the budget write-up to the, sent to the FinCom, the schools are right that we spend less per pupil. Some of that is a good reason. Some of it is not a good reason. So we need more money for schools. They're right about that. The town is also right that we don't spend enough to the town because there's so many kids. Right. <laughs> so both sides are right. And, you know, it's, it's kind of not common sense until you really think about it, that how can you both be not spending enough? Well, there's also this reliance on the per pupil expenditure rather than per the services delivered per dollar. Right. Per, mm -hmm. Which has always gotten my goat, I think. Yeah. Well, but, but you're right, it's, it's a 10 to 20 year master plan kind yes. of thinking that's needed here. Yeah. And it's a dialogue that, you know, the community can partake, partake of it as they wish. Mm -hmm. Some well, will, and, some you know, won't. You, once all of these things are identified, then you start to understand what people want and don't want, what they're yeah. willing to pay for. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, you know, the, the study that you were referring to shows that in general, although the per pupil number seems out of sync with the delivery of, of the service, the, the school services we have, our percentage of total budget to the schools far outstrips most That's correct. comparable yeah. communities. You know, I mean, by large percentages, 15, 18 yep. percent. Um, and, I, and I'm, that's just an observation. That's yep. not a, right. an analysis. That's mm -hmm. just, you know, 
that's just real. That's just what's going on. So I don't know how you actually sort that out and come to a good answer, but um, yeah. I think it does require a global look over a long term as to what you want to have happen and then move towards it. It gets easier to manage it that way instead of Absolutely. being in crisis, mm -hmm. right. you know, and being reactive. <coughs> just better financial planning, asset management. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I think you'd find the schools are a receptive partner to that discussion. Yeah, I think they will. So. Well, it would, it would greatly benefit them, you know, in the long run. I yeah. think if everybody knew where, where all the cards were, so to speak, mm -hmm. and where well, we wanted to go, that, that really can, now you can lay out what you want to be as well. I, I think you know it, what, the, what the whole yeah. wants to be. I totally agree with that, Kevin. And I think what happens is, by doing it that way, you can better inform town meeting and then by extension yep. the voting citizens as to what they really want to do. Um, because there are things on the horizon, as we well know. Um, I mean, you know, based on some of the comments Bob's made tonight, mm -hmm. when we get to that 17 budget, there's not going to be a million seven of free cash to throw into the, yeah. you know, into the mix. <clears throat> so you've got to find a way to decide what you're going to deliver or how you're going to pay for it, I mean, or some mm -hmm. combination of those two. And I think when people understand what the deal really is, they can make an informed judgment. Absolutely. Um, so I've got uh, 804. Sure. So I believe we can. Is it time for us to? Like for a us motion? To, uh, yes, yeah. 20, 22 articles. Okay, very good. Move with the Board of Selectmen close the warrant consisting of 22 articles for the 2015 annual town meeting to take place on April 27, 2015 in the Performing Arts Center, 62 Oakland Road at 7.30 p.m. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? So it's a, it's a hearing. Is there any public comment? No, it's not a hearing. Oh, it's not a hearing. We're, we're oh, just I closing the warrant. Oh, we're just we're closing the okay. well, We oh, have to wait in case the there are any last-minute articles that okay. trickle, trickle in. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. So, good. Okay. All those in favor? That will be for zero. Um, next, I probably should explain. We do have a hearing at 820, so you okay. can't vote. But why don't I just cover the next item, and then whenever it's convenient for you, maybe later in the night you can actually vote on it. Okay. Um, that's pages two and three of tonight's, actually two, three, and four of tonight's handout. I'm going to do it and look at page four, but page two is probably the most helpful. Uh, the library has requested that they change the name of library technician to library associate. So it's the same grade. There's no change other than the title. And it makes sense since there's a senior library associate, there may as well be a library associate. And they used to have that, and I don't understand how it went away, but... That's uh, somewhat meaningless. Our, as you know, our veteran service officer um, is a retired firefighter working part-time. We need a full-time veteran service officer, so between now and June, he will retire yet again. And in canvassing the market, and in particular with the help of um, Wilmington's veterans agent, who used to work in Reading, uh, we've decided that we really need to increase the pay to acquire a good full-time veterans uh, services officer. So that, I'm suggesting, goes up two grades. That's the way it was budgeted. That's the way it's been proposed to FinCom is at that higher level. We currently have two computer technician positions in grade F. What I'm suggesting, one of them is vacant. What I'm suggesting is that we increase one and decrease the other and change their responsibilities. So if you'll... If you look over on the far end of G on page four, we're calling one a senior computer technician, and that would that's a position that our incumbent would certainly qualify for, mm -hmm. and um, would do a lot more network work, not just PC work. So it's much more sophisticated. He's done a really nice job learning it. And then the computer technician would be much more of an entry level fix a PC mm -hmm. uh, hardware position. So together they're financially neutral, but it is a change. Um, and then lastly, as we discussed, as, as Gene did during the budget meetings in, in January, uh, the title Recreation Director is going to change to Community Services Director. And, and John has already made, as you would expect, really good progress in work, having people work together at the staff level. Not so much at the board level yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's right around the corner. So that, that's, again, just a title change. We will have uh, another one of these hearings to set the 
the new pay rates for uh, uh, FY16 sometime in either May or June. I will tell you there is one more position going to be added to this chart, and that comes out of the ARCASA federal grant. There's another half-time position. Um, we'll want to add it in once we really understand the full details. And it, there's no real harm in hiring a person before we add it since it's federally grant-funded, I think. Mm -hmm. In other words, they're not being paid off our normal. Right. We're required to pay them what the grant says, so it's not like this is setting their wage. And that's all I have. I guess we're doing minutes. Mm -hmm. minutes now. Yeah, let's go ahead and do minutes. This is, uh, okay. <coughs> January 20th, first. Uh, move that the Board of Selectmen approve the minutes of January 20th, 2015 as amended. Second. Second. Yeah, any, any discussion? I, have no changes. I didn't have any changes. Okay. All those in favor? And move that the Board of Selectmen approve the executive session minutes of December 9th, 2014, as written. Is there a second? Second. Yes. This has to be rolled. Yes. John? Yes. Dan? Yes. Ryan? Yes. So that would be 4-0. <coughs> yep. Okay. All right, that takes care of that. You, if you want one more topic to cover before we yeah, get to sure. the firearms, please. Mm -hmm. um, in talking to um, one of you, at least, in the last day, and I know John Arena was also in the circumstances, actually, I think two of you present. Um, I'm going to suggest you cancel the next selectman's meeting because you're going to have a tough time getting a quorum, and we have no agenda items. So that seems like the perfect opportunity <laughs> to cancel it. Um, there's, there's a lot of balls in the air, and there's yeah. no reason why they don't all fit into the March 24th yeah. meeting a little bit better. Uh, and I will say there's one exception. Um, Jesse and I got an email today from a fellow who was in front of you before who needed some permission for a driveway permit, and it's one of those scenic road driveway permits. Um, it, we learned at about 4 o'clock that I, I had expected to present something to you tonight on his behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, we learned that it was in his outbox in his email for the last couple of days, and he didn't realize it never got oh. sent. Oh. <laughs> so I felt badly. I said, I can't bring something to the selectmen without public notification. You know, it wasn't on the agenda. It, it really needs to be mm -hmm. probably a hearing, uh, but if not, it's the next best thing because your okay. neighbors deserve to know and so forth. Um, you know, I, if, if the information he has provided uh, says that there's no material change from when you approved it, I don't think it's a big deal at all. I believe that's what it'll say, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Hmm. But that's the only thing that a, a, an earlier March meeting might have helped, but he understands it was, you know, it was his problem. Um, next March will work out fine. He's not going to be able to work on it. Well, I was, I was just to say, I, I was thinking that yeah. <laughs> we're in trouble if we, not if we can issue. see that driveway so much. Yeah. 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 Given that we have a, uh, could I amend my uh, liaison report to add one item, given that we're not meeting on the 10th? Uh, yes. uh, most of you got the notice there's going to be a series of legislative breakfasts. Uh, the oh, yeah. nearest one to us is in Melrose the morning of uh, oh, yeah. Friday, March 13th, 8 to 10 at Melrose Wakefield Hospital, the Perkins Auditorium. I signed up to go. Anybody else who's interested is more than welcome to sign up. I think you probably still have the email. Yep. Yeah. So I'll be going to that. And, and just so you're aware, um, there's a number of us that signed up at the staff level to go to the one. It's after that. It's in Lexington. I forget mm -hmm. the date. Maybe the 20th. Okay. We'll compare notes. See if they're saying the same thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you go on the March 13th, Dan? I'll, yep. I'll let our legislators know because... They sometimes go, they sometimes don't. If they know you're going to be there, that right. may change their opinion, but I'll, I'll let them know. It's Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th. And what, what's the timing on that? 8 to 10 a.m., uh, Perkins Auditorium, Melrose Wakefield Hospital okay. in Melrose. I'm going to be out of time. Okay. And that's a firm cancel now on the 10th? Yeah, you, you had two members not available. Okay. Uh, to begin with, so. Uh, really gets out of office, sorry. Um, you know, to the, to your request from the last meeting, I, I did have breakfast with the superintendent this morning. He agreed that uh, a meeting between the chairs and the vice chairs is an appropriate step to discuss whatever we needed to s discuss to set up a joint meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, 
I think, and I didn't ask him this question, I think the joint meeting should happen with the new board, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. It's something looking forward for mm -hmm. both, both school committee and well, do we want, kind of want to get the, the institutional history from uh, retiring members of the board? Well, I think we can always find that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so he's fine with that. And then the light department I have not reached out to. Um, mm -hmm. I've not seen the general manager. I will. Um, that's one I might need a little more guidance. I, I've I been talking that, to John I know Arena. I that that's certainly one that needs a pre-meeting. Yes, um, and, I agree. And, and John has requested numerous times that that be set up. And, yeah, and I have um, not there heard. There has not been uh, a willingness to do that. Right. But without a clear agenda, that it's, you know, right. you, you want to have a clear agenda if you're going to be meeting and make it worthwhile. Yeah. And parts. the general manager and I have discussed this, so we're both aware, but for whatever reason, we're not getting together on it yet. Is there any other business you can think of in the near term that you want to accomplish, um, especially in March, aside from saying goodbye to one of the board members? <laughs> Let me know if you think of anything. Our agenda's got maybe a small space left in March. Okay. Well, for the March 24th. Yeah, March 24th. Because we're, we are definitely hexing off yeah. the early March. one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And then in April, the new board is going to get to uh, have a lot of liaison reports like MAPC and, and all those folks will come in. I think the RCTV one might be interesting. I have not talked to Steve Gold. He mm. went to one of the meetings. Good. I will talk to Steve. Uh, and there's a whole host of other people that will come in. I think that's always helpful for the new board to see. All right. Um, we're supposed to have a hearing, right, on this classification plan, but that's supposed to be at 820. We're six now minutes. at 814, six minutes away. <laughs> yeah, I have nothing have else to say about it. Here <laughs> who would like to, I, you can sure. skip right over the vote for that till the end of the night. No one's okay. going to mind. All right, All right let, let's do that then. We'll do that. So. Would it be helpful if I read the instructional motion? And I have that behind me, uh, yeah, just in case we need it. Yeah, why don't you do that? Uh, maybe, maybe for, the, for anybody who's. This, uh, regarding the uh, firearms bylaw, following a great deal of discussion at town meeting and the uh, defeat of the petition article, the following instructional motion was passed at the special town meeting session of January 7th, 2015. Move the town meeting, ask the town manager and the board of selectmen to do the following. Look into how and why general bylaw 8.9.1 was amended in 2011 and report back to annual town meeting. Investigate the history of the Timberneck Swamp and how it was designated conservation land with an island of private land in the middle of it and report back to town meeting at annual town meeting. Determine and implement strategies that will, in the immediate future, improve the safety of nearby residents and travelers through the neighborhood of the Timberneck Swamp by, for example, clearly and visibly delineating the boundaries of this conservation land, posting no hunting signs on all parcels of town land, etc. Investigate the legality of transporting any type of firearm or explosives across town land for the purposes of hunting, sporting, etc., and report back to annual town meeting. Finally, appoint a working group to draft a revision to General Bylaw 8.9.1 that protects the rights and interests of all town mm -hmm. citizens. Yeah, and that was voted uh, by a majority of town meeting. Right. Okay. So, um, First thing, we, I know we have a number of people who are here who are interested. I, I want to make sure that you've signed in. Um, please, please do that, and um, we'll go ahead and have our discussion first as a board. Um, and then when we do have public discussion, I'd like to ask that you please state your name and your precinct, and that you wait to be recognized, and that you do not interrupt other individuals who are speaking, because we, we, we want to keep this a really early <coughs> process. And it's only respectful to allow people to have their say. So. We want to give people that opportunity, okay? Um, so I think that we had, one of the things that we had talked about was potentially setting up some type of an ad hoc committee for this, right. yeah, which, I think that you know, that, makes yeah. sense. I feel very strongly that the, that mm -hmm. the smartest thing we could do at this point, mm -hmm. um, now that we've kind of had that whole, you know, furor of budget season and mm -hmm. extra special town meetings <laughs> and all of that kind of stuff, um, it strikes me that, um, we would have several citizens um, mm -hmm. um, who, you know, who have an interest kind of on both sides of the warrant that was defeated. Mm -hmm. um, 
it also strikes me that we should probably have two of us. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I further think that uh, we should ask the chief, either for he or you know his mm -hmm. or Mark Segal, his you know his deputy, to sit on that committee. Well, maybe um, we just ask the chief to appoint someone and appoint he, someone. let him yeah. let him pick whoever sure. it I might mean, be. Sure. I mean, however yeah. he wants to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of great ideas that have surfaced. I know mm -hmm. that some. Um, that in the inter in the intervening period of time that mm -hmm. there has been some discussion by citizens mm -hmm. um, who you know, on both either, sides of uh, on both sides who either had the opportunity mm -hmm. to speak or because the question was called didn't get mm -hmm. the opportunity to, to sure. speak. right uh, but I do know that there's been some uh, from from all reports productive you know yeah good discussions mm -hmm. going on mm -hmm. um, I know that the um, I have done some of the, some of the research into the um, history of that property, mm -hmm. dating back into the 30s, actually. So I've got that to add to the oh, to the discussion. Um, it's interestingly been back and forth in town hands due to tax acquisitions. Mm. Oh, uh, interesting. And you know, most recently was reacquired by the family that lost it to a tax lien to the town and then reacquired it, and that oh. actually happened. Mm -hmm. Within the last 10 or 15 years, I mean, so there's been a, a lot of activity around this this property. Um, <laughs> interestingly, um, and the other thing that's gone on already, um, which I think was a was a really a wise choice, um, was that um, the conservation committee is posted it. Posted it. You know, yeah. They you know they took that yeah. step. Yeah. yeah. Um, and interestingly, by taking that step, if you take a look at the instructional motion, investigate the legality of transporting any type of firearm or explosive across town land for the purposes of hunting, um, the research says that in a posted setting, that becomes illegal. Mm. Um, so, you know, so there's some interesting progress, but we need to, I really do think we need mm. to form a working group. Yep. Uh, that working group can then answer all of these issues and surface mm -hmm. a discussion towards a public safety solution, yep. mm -hmm. especially in the Timberneck area, because mm -hmm. I, I think that's a genuine, Absolutely. you know, that's a genuine concern. I but, think yeah. we probably want to have someone from conservation also on this committee. Yeah, where it's conservation yeah, land one. and where it's, it's surrounded, it's, by, the it's surrounded the by it. Or the conservation administrator possibly, mm -hmm. or the chairman. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe we should ask the uh, conservation chairman for a recommendation. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's the move. Because they've taken an active interest as well mm -hmm. they should, uh, given that um, that, you know, that island, that literally, as it's pointed out there, that island of land is, mm -hmm. you know, surrounded contiguously by, uh, by conservation land. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so I think, you, you know, you end up with six or eight people. It's a nice size working group. Um, I think between now and town meeting, mm -hmm. um, if we make the invitation to uh, to those people and those from those particular groups, um, mm -hmm. we can have two or three gatherings and and have an update. We might not be able to have a complete answer yeah. um, to the last one, which is the amendment to the bylaw. Um, but that group will get to know each, each other and you know, mm -hmm. process several of these, come up with some potential yeah. solutions, which I think will lead to a good bylaw to solve the public safety issue that seems to be at hand. So yeah. if we have two selectmen, we have a, the police chief appoints someone, designate, we have right. a, a, a conservation chief designate, desi designate. Um, and then we have several citizens. I would recommend we maybe have four. Sure, I, you um, know. Appointed by the board. I, it would have to be appointed by the board, and I think we would want to sort of figure out what are you know what are the criteria. So if we yeah. have a lot of people who are interested, we can also then well, I, advertise you know, it as you know. Well, there's, there's going to also be some legal questions that the group will have on the spot. I mean, is is it not worth it to have to run up our ever increasing? <laughs> Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, well, I, I wouldn't tell you, put that um, on the committee. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, I would Bob wait until speed those dump? items. I mean, uh, come up and we'll let Bob, uh, address, you know. Yeah, if I might just make a comment. I think you have two or three issues on that list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, the first two can be done without a working group by staff. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly with John's yeah. research. 
Um, there's no real opinions there. It's pretty much it factual as, right. as best we can piece together. Um, and then you have what I sort of think is two issues left. One is timber neck swamp specific, and the other is more general. Mm -hmm. Now, you could put them together. You could separate them. Right. I think the working group, you know, should work on all those. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have to talk to the chief. I'm not sure that you want to have staff on a working group. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can be a resource to the working group, but it's generally not a good idea to have staff well, on not a voting group. member, right. no. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So uh, I absolutely agree that police, uh, you know, public safety broadly and conservation should be involved, but I don't know about being voting members or members. Mm -hmm. It also depends whether you want to call it an ad hoc committee or call it a working group now. Call it. This is partly a Ray question. Mm -hmm. An ad hoc committee I fully understand. Open meeting law pertains. Mm -hmm. um, working group mm -hmm. by the superintendent I'm very familiar with. Open meeting right. law does not apply. Apply. However, I believe if there are two selectmen on a working group, open meeting law does apply. One it doesn't matter what you call it. So I'll have to ask yeah. that. Brought by the petitioner. I don't yeah. think she'll have a problem. So yeah. I, I would say, though. But that does limit your meeting ability. Well, oh, okay. So it's the limitation on the meetings. Yeah. Um, so you're saying regardless it's going to be subject to but I think it may because it'll it involve be. two select when I think it may be open meeting regardless of what you call well, it. Uh, you know, which is fine. We just need to make sure we know. Which is fine anyways. Wide open and transparent. It's just yeah. timing. Given the level of interest in this and yeah. the number of people who are interested, I think it probably makes sense yeah. to have it be an op open yeah. meeting. Right. I, it does. But you can't you just say, "Let's meet tomorrow to morning meet. at the sea, you know at the swamp." Right. You, you have, have to have posted it. It has to be posted. You have to be in I, certain places. Yeah. But that gives then all those people yeah. the ability to I, participate. I didn't read on that last point that the ad hoc committee needs to report out a, a finding by the time of annual town meeting. Just that we'd be making some progress yeah. toward establishing mm -hmm. them, and well, if we, we need to work toward, we need to give an update. Oh, an update, yeah. right. We need to give an update in April. Mm -hmm. right. and, thought, and that we yeah. should be. Yeah. I totally agree that, that this should be a public meeting mm -hmm. type of okay. thing. However, what we do need to understand is that that always is going to present timing challenges. Yeah. So, you know, whether or not how much work you can get done between now and April gets challenged in a, you know, in a public meeting. The nature mm -hmm. of it, you, you mm -hmm. can't just say, "Okay, let's let's meet down at Timber Neck Swamp tomorrow morning at uh, you know at eight o'clock and take a walk." Um, uh, that would be probably difficult to do at this point in time, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll probably get lost in the snow. But I think we can get a lot of work done and give a good okay. update. And you know, and I think that that committee um, could, you know, certainly come up with a viable. I mean, answer all of those issues. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the issues is, I mean, you know, I've got to call out to the uh, to the current owner, which is a land trust, um, wanting to have a, you know, small discussion mm -hmm. with the current owner of that property as well. So, yeah. you know, I think we can get a lot of work done, um, get a good update in by April, um, and I think it should mm -hmm. be composed of, I, I like the idea of, of four citizens. I think yep. that's, a, that's a great Se idea. Seven voting people, so that's an um, odd number. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, Mr. Burkhardt, I think, is here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He did, a, I think, a, a fine job of presenting mm -hmm. the Warren okay. article. It, I mean, it didn't pass, but that didn't mean it didn't, it wasn't very right. interest, it still, interesting. It still gained it's, a lot of traction. Of course yes. it did. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, so, for example, I mean, you'd be one of the first people I, it, I would invite. And, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what, how you feel about that. But I do think we, you know, um, we would want to invite you know, a handful of people, and and there are certainly opposing views on the grander warrant that was there. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think anybody questions the public safety issue of the Timberneck Swamp, so I do think there's two issues going on. Yeah. Right. One right. is right. let's right. get an immediate solution to mm -hmm. the public safety issue, the Timberneck Swamp, and thankfully the Conservation you know, Commission has taken a step mm -hmm. yep. which has added strength, Right. you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, Created a you know essentially a de facto law mm -hmm. against somebody going in there with a gun. I mean, the minute that gets posted, you cannot walk into that land because it is landlocked by conservation land, which it's illegal oh. to bring mm -hmm. a gun into. Now that's oh. not going to stop a bad person oh. from doing it, but <laughs> laws never do, though. No, but yeah, it, what exactly. it does is it you know <clears throat> it, it's one more 
Mm -hmm. It's one more step. Right. Yeah, and it know. seems like these are le um, these are licensed, legitimate hunters yeah. who have been using that land, and, and I, I would assume it would stop them. Well, yeah, you'd, one would hope, but you know, I know that the I know that the neighbors have heard at ridiculous hours on ridiculous days gunfire. Uh, those aren't my guess is those aren't licensed hunters, and right. I think those are people right. doing things inappropriately. That mm -hmm. I don't know that I wasn't there, but I, you know I. I don't question for a minute the reports yeah. of when and you know mm -hmm. time of night and you know Christmas Eve wasn't Christmas Eve one of those mm -hmm. times Christmas so, Eve really you know, or Christmas Day I, it was a it was a you know a most Crazy unusual time, time mm -hmm. outside of hunting season and uh, all of those kinds of things so um, you know I think that there's a lot for the committee to discuss um, and a lot of good ideas have surfaced so um, that. That would be my recommendation, and I and I would suggest that you know a couple of us uh, be appointed. Um, I, I guess we'd probably wait for the chair to decide that. So, is there enough, Bob, to draft some sort of a guideline for yeah. this ad hoc committee? For your next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything John Arena has discussed. I, I think you've covered everything. Um, he he was very interested in. in more formalizing the process to make sure it was public process. Right, right. Yeah. absolutely. It has to be public. Yeah. Well, there's been public a, I mean, process, you know, and I think the other thing I think is important is just stating this is, you know, this is what the citizens are going to be asked to do and really opening right. it so that people who are interested, you know, have an opportunity to put their names forward if yep. they're interested. And, so. and even more than that, just because you're not on the working group itself. You can Please always attend. attend. Right. You know, right. the, there would be a public the, meeting. The, the, public the information comments, from, so. from um, both sides, it would be, would be definitely we, more. We always uh, welcome the welcome. public when we had them at the Zoning Advisory Committee, and I can tell you <laughs> that consisted of two people of the public <laughs> on a regular basis. So. We'll get more than two. <laughs> I think so, too. Yeah. But that will be a good thing, yeah, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin, any other thoughts? Um, no, I, I still, the you know, I still want to come back to this from a, from a legal standpoint, there, there's going to be times where this yeah. working group oh, yeah. has questions mm -hmm. that deadlocks the working group. Yeah. Can't, we won't be able to move forward until we answer this. That's why I said, you know, I, I know it's a, it's a pain. Is there, is there ways we can get around, not get around it, is there oh, ways we, just, we can accommodate the working group to say, yeah, you can't do that? That we need to just ask to counsel the questions as they rise. Right. Well, we've gotten, we've gotten some reports in, we're doing some background work on from Fish and Game. You know, yeah. Okay. They've defined some things. They've clarified the um, confusion. Okay. Well, they've clarified that there is confusion within the Mass General so, Law, which we kind true. of all know, I think. Um, right. But. Um, so it sounds like there'll be homework before the first meeting starts because there's already a there's bunch already of been background a lot of information. Done in so. preparation okay. of this, knowing that, you know, we, we needed to make a report. So a lot of work has been done. Um, and I think we can maybe put Ray on notice that yeah. we're going to, you know, he, yeah, he maybe needs to assign a person yeah. rather than himself. And and given an agenda, he may well want to either himself or assign someone to come to one, one or more of these meetings. That's, that's not a problem. Well, maybe it's just the way we structure how these meetings go. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the, the first couple of meetings can be, you know, nothing other than, than brainstorming. Let's yeah. not try to get to a solution. Right. Let's just throw a bunch of things on the wall, let Ray take a look at those things, and then we can structure yep. them better for mm -hmm. yep. the meetings thereafter. I just don't want to get it bogged down where our meetings get yep. all of a sudden right. I do derailed think, yeah, because I, we can't I, get I answers to questions. I think the, yeah. first couple yeah. of, the first couple of meetings are probably going to be as much a brainstorming session mm -hmm. of putting night listening sessions, right. putting ideas up on the board, and letting you know council go back and figure out which path is legal, which path right. is illegal, right. you know, you know, I think that that's probably the best. Um, and, you know, you're going to have just enough people in the room mm -hmm. to get some traction, but not so many that it, you know, it, it loses its focus. Sometimes if these things get too big, um, you know. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that's, that is I'm, the thing. So. Dan and I are on one now. It's mm -hmm. over 20 people. It's, mm. That's way too big. It's tough. It's tough to get much done in two um, hours. Dan, did you have anything additional you wanted to add, or if you yeah, had I, the uh, do we want to designate uh, who shall chair this group? One of the selectmen, perhaps. Well, uh, I I think it makes sense to have one of the selectmen oh. cha chair it. All right. 
that would to be decided by the group. Sense to, me to be decided based on, on who's on that. Okay. But, um, Are there any uh, criteria? I'll say the, from the public you want to ask for, or um, just leave it all. Leave well, it. Well, I, I do think that we probably need some criteria because if you've got multiple people that want to join, they should have some idea about what you're looking for in in the criteria, right? Um, I don't know what those are. Well, we should well, have so interested neighbors. I was going to sure. say, yeah. I mean, right. either personal right. interest or background, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if we have some citizens that have some good background in this that, that we do. may or may not be yeah. you we know, have directly some affected. actually that but surfaced that yeah. um, actually didn't get an opportunity to speak. Mm -hmm. um, right. And that was just kind of a function, a parliamentary right. Right. function. Right. That, so, yeah, we've got some, <clears throat> I think we've got some. Uh, I think we've got people that are looking at this from a couple of different directions, mm -hmm. and I think that's yeah. the kind of sampling that we yeah. need, so right. that we've got a mix of ideas going mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. um, and uh, take it from there. And I think Dan, you know, you and Kevin do the interviewing around all mm -hmm. committees. Would you do all the right. same thing here? For oh, I, I think this can be less formal. I don't know that we need to do that. Yeah. Well, well, it might we could. depend people if there apply. are a, lot you want us of, to do a bunch right. of people who apply. I guess it depends apply. on how many people yeah. apply. You know, right. if you end up with 25 people apply, yeah, then we'll, you're we'll, we'll do it. To, you're going to need to sort it. Yeah. Right, um, right, right. I, I think that makes sense. Then, if you get four, then you don't need. And it. I do think we should <laughs> mm -hmm. open it up in a public forum right. so that people have the opportunity. Anybody who wants to apply to be on this committee yeah. should be given the opportunity to do so. Right. Absolutely. Um, and then if that turns into a number that's unwieldy, then you two guys are going to have to you right. know, do your duty and yeah. okay. um, and sort it out so that, you know, and I do think four is probably a good number. Yeah, I think it's um, a... That gives the largest number mm -hmm. to the citizens. Mm -hmm. right. right. You know, yep. being represented. Mm -hmm. Yep. Twice yeah. as many citizens as selectmen. Sure. Yep. Um, yep. You know, your ex officio is going to be somebody from public safety designated mm -hmm. by uh, the chief. Um, we're going to ask conservation to mm -hmm. designate yep. to designate someone, mm -hmm. either the chair yep. or a person yep. from conservation. Are we forgetting anybody? I don't, I don't think, so. think so. I want to have an opportunity for the public to speak, sure. Sure. Um, but I, I want to limit it to Just this. before you do that, I, I think yeah. it's important the public understand something about, let's say it's an ad hoc committee, just right. for argument's mm -hmm. sake. Um, there'll be four members from the public. With all due respect, everyone's vote is equal. Um, an ad hoc committee is advisory to the Board of Selectmen. I'll go back in time to an ad hoc committee before any of you were on it, I believe. We had a tax classification ad hoc committee. They ended up voting four to two to suggest that the selectmen split the tax rate. They brought the, the selectmen to the suggestion of the selectmen. The selectmen didn't agree. So it's ultimately the selectmen who are going to decide what a bylaw looks like and how it goes to town meeting. Then town meeting decides what happens. So. The input of the uh, you know ad hoc committee is, is valuable, but quite honestly, a resident who's not a voting member but attends all the meeting and is just as interested, I think, will be just as valuable to the Absolutely. board. Absolutely, right. So it's not like a decision is made by the ad hoc committee; it's just advice is given. So I think it's important that there's not a food fight to become a member because there's a real fine line between I'm a voting member and I'm not. So that's a good point. <clears throat> All right, so I, I would like to keep the comments to kind of what this process is going to look like and suggestions if, um, if there are th ideas, thoughts you have in terms of the process and maybe what we've not thought about or not considered. So, yes, um, can my you name just is, say your name? And my name is Maureen Hilliard, and I'm, I'm a resident of Timonek Drive, okay. Precinct 2. Um, are we looking for some kind of a report back in April? A report of progress. Well, It'll be a report okay. of yep. progress. And just under that vein, having been through many of these things in my prior life, um, before retirement, <laughs> by the time we get all of the how we're going to do it's down, the advertising for people, and I, I don't think you're going to have a run of people who want to sit on the <laughs> <laughs> um, we're really not going to have a lot of time, so I mean, there's a. This is the. Um, there won't be the a decision. Anywhere. There won't be a decision made. No, by right. Anyone. But you no. want at least the information, I would assume, out that has been gleaned from various people. Right. Uh, informational piece. Mm -hmm. 
um, you want to start some discussion, and I must say, as one person, um, I am delighted to hear an admission that people think this is a public safety issue, because I did not hear that at town meeting at all. And under that vein, certainly as a Timberneck resident, I really would like to see if this committee could come with some kind of ideas about the public safety issue, because I think that's what really drives most of us. Sure. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Alan Bollier. I live on Belmont Street, Precinct 2. Um, I spoke with the trustee of Timberneck Realty Trust this afternoon. Mm -hmm. oh, good. I was the first person that had contacted him. He's from Wakefield, Massachusetts, and Fort Myers, Florida. Um, he was not aware that there was a, a hunting issue hmm. in his property. Um, and nor has he given anyone permission in the last 10 years to hunt on his property. So I'm sure that throws a little difference with what's going on. Um, that's well, just some information that I've learned. He had no idea of it. He told me I could tell you that this evening and we can move forward from there. Well, I think it's been clear that there have been issues there that have nothing to do with hunting. And so, you know, we aren't talking about the safety issues, but that they're not necessarily linked to hunting mm -hmm. is what it sounds like from what we there are, heard. Yeah, there are hunters there, but there are other issues. Yeah, there, there are other there issues, too. so. I mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, the pre the, 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 what precedes all this mm -hmm. was the discussion of hunting yeah. in that area. Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay, and it was discussion also of you need to have permission from the landowner mm -hmm. to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I spoke to the trustee of the landowner, and he's indicated he, in the last 10 years, he has not given anyone permission to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's some information that I don't think anybody knew of until I had a dialogue with this gentleman. Ha, this afternoon has he said that, that he has given permission to somebody like 10 years ago? Or is he, you, you, the way you were saying it, that he hasn't given it to anybody in the last 10 years, almost suggests that he's given it to somebody. Did he, did he kind of allude to that? I would ask him that question. Okay. But he, is, he, he specifically said in the last 10 years, he hasn't given it permission to anybody. I believe he, his father was the prior owner of the Timberneck Realty Trust. So maybe his father was the one that may have granted it in the past. I cannot answer that. Okay. But I know his father was the prior owner of the, the parcel of land that is in question. Yeah, that's been in the family for quite some time, yeah. actually. I'm, I'm glad you spoke to him because I've actually sent him two letters. Okay. And so I don't know if he was... Florida and now he's here or if you spoke to him by phone. Well, I'd, like I'd love to talk to you maybe after or at okay. Morrell and you can give me a, shoot me an email and because I have been trying to reach him by letter okay. in the hopes of having a similar discussion with him um, and you know who knows. Um, I just I just saw his, when I went to the assessor's office, saw the, the trustee and his address in Wakefield. Right. I looked up his, I left him a message in Wakefield a few weeks ago. He hadn't called me back, but I also noticed from the assessor's office there was an address in Fort Myers, Florida associated with that. So I used 411.com and <laughs> <laughs> so I gave that a phone call. So he is in Florida. That explains why he's not responding okay. to the mail. <laughs> there we go. So that's good. That's actually excellent. Fort Myers. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank you. Place Thanks to for be. that Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Alan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other public comments? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Dorothy Marshall from Timberneck Drive, mm -hmm. and um, I know that this whole process is going to take, it's likely that it won't be voted on until November at town meeting, and then it'll take another three months to go through the Attorney General's office, so I'm wondering if there's any chance that you could speed up this area, the Timberneck Swamp uh, concern, so that by the April town meeting, um, there can be a solution. Um, I, I, I actually think that, you know, the step, the first step that's been taken, Dorothy, um, with the conservation posting, I think is an important first step. Mm -hmm. He fact. wasn't going to do that until the fall because of hunting season. I spoke with him yesterday or the day before, and I said, you know, people are hunting back there now. I think we can, so he's promised to do it by May. Um, so I think that, you know, I think the answer to your question is up surrounding the yeah. like swamp area. Right. I, I do think that we can move more quickly because... Right. You do have a public 
public safety issue, and I don't think it's going to require. If you look at the very last one, a change yeah. in, the, in the in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. um, to Not for that particular property. Right. Made it exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, so I, I I'm hopeful that we could you know move more quickly in the Trimmer Neck Swamp area because I think it's an immediate and pressing need. Mm -hmm. So if I hear a gunshot at night, what, what do I think? I think, oh, maybe that's on the private property, or is that illegally some somebody shooting? I think you there. should report. Just report. I do, report. I do yeah. nothing happens. I do what we do it three days a week. Nothing happens. No one ever searches Timberneck Swamp. They drive down our street slowly. They say, we'll come by. I say, don't drive down our street. Go down Libby Ave. Go down near the cemetery. Go out. Go through Timberneck Swamp. It isn't happening along Timberneck Drive. It's happening in back of us. And nothing ever happened. And I've been talking about this since, since July. So um, I, I would like to see something happen by April. Yeah, I, you know, I guess we're going to have to hear from the chief. Yeah. Um, just so you, you know, there is nothing the town meeting can do in April on this issue. But if you came to town meeting and said we've called There is nothing meeting. legally the town meeting can do. The, the warrant has been closed tonight. We have to close warrants so far in advance with public process. There is no opportunity unless we called another so April town meeting. Just so you're aware of that, and I told you that before. The next scheduled uh, town November. meeting is November, and actually the advance notice for that is also pretty horrific. I think it's in September. So they have to have decided. I realize so that. So the public process, unfortunately, for town meeting action is a long one. I know. So That's hopefully John has said the non-town meeting solution is much faster. So can you, like, come to, well, try to so I, I will tell you, Mrs. Marshall, I, it, personally, I'm very hopeful that we can, in working with the chief of police and recognizing a public safety issue, move towards a Timberneck Swamp solution, a grander right. solution the way that, you know, for example, the one that was presented by Mr. Burkhardt on your behalf. Um, that one, it sounds like, is not going to find its way until, no, until November, but I think that there is a separate and pressing public safety issue I personally am very hopeful that, as part of this committee, we can we can move to action. Now, there's a lot of things you can do, but you can't stop a person who's going to go break the law from breaking the law because they're going to do that. I mean, I, I, and I'm sure that you realize that. Um, but we can tighten up all the things that we can do. I mean, if conservation is going to wait till May, maybe we can get them to move a little sooner. Yeah. That you know, that maybe is as, as simple as a dis you know quick discussion with the chairman to see if they can move more quickly, and if so, it's just an implementation step. So I think and we don't need town meeting for that. Right. Dan. Yeah. Uh, at one of our previous meetings, one of the other butters stated that they had seen a person with a firearm adjacent to their property or very close to it. Yeah, you know what they I'm were talking uncomfortable about. But they they said the they did not want to report the person. If we have laws on the books and you decline to report a person or prosecute, that's not going to help the situation. Yeah. So we we're hoping that we will get some help from you guys. If you see something like that happening, please call the police. I do think if we take this in bite-sized pieces, it's going to be safety issues will be affected more quickly. So, for example, instead of trying to solve the grander problem, the grander question mm -hmm. that some people have and other people have. I mean, there's different of opinion on those things. But I don't think anybody, I, I personally haven't met anybody who has, who has, a, who has a problem in solving the public safety issue in the next one. Mm -hmm. And I think we can move towards that in a bite-sized piece much more quickly. And that's, that's my hope and I think that that's what we would that have to be voted on a town meeting whether so, you're going to buy so, the property? Um, you know what, I'm going to, um, and I'm allow, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm going to allow someone else to speak now. We will not, uh, it depends on what the working group determines, whether there's anything to go to a town meeting or not. Something going to town meeting doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work or not. There are different solutions. Not everything has to go to town meeting. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's the only, <laughs> the only route that you have mm -hmm. for your solution of war. A, a situation to the situation that's out there. Okay, so it, that's not the only way that this problem is going to be fixed. There could be some recommendations so. we would make to our uh, representative and senator. Absolutely. And, and you Absolutely. know, we may be so. able to, exa for example, Alan, you've spoken to this gentleman. Um, you know, 
I would be, I'm glad you have a contact point because mm -hmm. letters haven't worked for me, right. but um, he might well be willing at town expense to post no hunting there. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that would be an immediate, you know, solution whether the town owned it or didn't own it, but you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if he became aware that, that a public safety issue has arisen around his property, he might well be willing particularly if we do it at our expense. So I, I think we're getting into solutioning here. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry, <laughs> and you're a, right. So, so it's, it's, they're good solutions, but um, I do want to give uh, people a chance to, to, to comment on the process and kind of what we talked about. So there are other, yes. My name is Eric Burkhart. Um, on Belmont Street, Mr. Bullier's neighbor, uh, <laughs> precinct two. Um, just a comment um, in appreciation of the spirit of the discussion from the Board of Selectmen um, seems solutions oriented to me. Um, forming a committee to further talk about the issue in a constructive way seems like the way to go. Um, as you can guess, because we were one of the petitioners, or presenting on behalf of petitioners, we're very interested in this issue. Um, my wife composed a letter, sent it to each of you. Hopefully, you received it. Yep, it did. It did. Um, Mr. Halsey, um, you mentioned that. Um, you, you might ask me if I would be on that uh, committee. Uh, if you did, I would accept, or one of the petitioners, or one of us would, if it's not myself, perhaps my wife or one of the others, we'd be happy to do it. Um, we, we do see it as a public safety issue, as some others have mentioned. Um, and if I were to be on that committee, I would be interested in solving what I think is the most acute, most acute issue, is the public safety issue, in a rapid fashion, as rapid as reasonably possible. Um, but as you can tell from the conversation at the town meeting on January 5th, that public safety issue butts up against some other issues that people have different opinions on. And I think that the committee you're talking about could engage in a positive, constructive way on that. Um, since that meeting, I have had some conversations with some members of the community who were of a different opinion than than I was, but they were constructive. Um, so I think the spirit of this can be, is, is good, to be done in a constructive way. And we can solve the public safety issue rapidly, but also in a constructive way, talk about the larger issue where there are some differences in opinion. And I think we can do it in, uh, in a non contentious way, and I would look forward to being part of that process. Good, thank you. Additional public comment? Um, I have a question. Angela, can, I, I know who you Angela, are. Angela, can you? Yeah. <laughs> Precinct. Precinct 5. Thank you. I, sorry, I was at another <laughs> meeting, so I might have missed it. But um, I, I was reading a lot about the, the state laws and everything, and people were talking about hunting, but the law actually says hunting and sporting. I, I wasn't able to find a definition of sporting. So so before you came in, we, we, what we've talked about is this process and having a working group. and. Part of that will be doing some of this research, in, okay. and, and there's been some preliminary discussion. Mr. Halsey has already talked to um, the state about some of these things that, that okay. are not very clear. So they're, they're definitely, I think you mentioned we might need to go to the state. Like there may be some things that need to be cleaned up at the state level at as well. The, at, about so, what definitions yes. are, mm -hmm. yeah. such as sporting. Mm -hmm. or, okay. Right. Right. So that's why we're talking about this quicker you know, let's address the immediate safety needs, something that's not related to town meeting, not related to bylaws necessarily, but let's look at the longer term as well so that we're dealing with both situations. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Bryn Burkhart, Precinct 2. Can I ask the first item on the instructional yeah. motion, mm -hmm. looking into why the bylaw was amended in 2011 mm -hmm. to include hunting and sporting? Has anything been done on that? I know you mentioned you've done some research, Mr. I, I know that oh, wasn't Mr. Lelsher. You might remember. <laughs> yes. I have I have looked into why it was done. <laughs> um, the answer is complex. The only real answer I'm going to find, we have no records that say this is exactly why this thing changed. And we normally have very good records. Um, we changed town council due to an illness. Um, unfortunately, prior town council is not medically available to help us. But there is one of um, town council's prior uh, associates working in another town that I can reach out to but have not yet. Um, that plus the former town manager hopefully solves the problem. 
I reached out through all of our documents, found nothing. I talked to the town clerk who sat on the recodification committee and worked very closely on this issue with the town manager. Um, this was a change that was made under the guise, if you will, of recodification where nothing was supposed to change meaning. But there must have been a reason why this happened from a lawyer's perspective is the only thing I can come up with, but I don't know that reason. Knowing past town council, my guess, and it is only a guess, is he said you need to change this language in order to conform to whatever state regulation he thought was important. So normally the amount of work I've done would, would be triple what I would have needed to solve the question. I haven't solved it yet. We absolutely will have this for April town meeting. The, I was going to ask you about the yeah. first two items where you said those are I expect staff. the first two to be wrapped up and fully and So if we can report back with. on those at yeah. April and, and report where we are in the progress of this working group and then any short-term solutions <coughs> that have been taken. I agree. That's what I would expect to have <coughs> for April town meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I just add one more? Yes. One more comment to that is when we were looking during the one week we were trying to hardly prepare for January 5th, um, looking at our surrounding communities, Andover, Wakefield, Wilmington, Stoneham, um, we were not able to find the bylaw at Auburn <coughs> and Linfield, but no other town has a bylaw, a firearms bylaw that, that talks about hunting and sporting in this way. So I, that's why I was really interested as to why ours would be so different than our neighboring communities. Thank you. <coughs> Additional uh, comment? Okay, I think that wraps up this topic and Bob you're going to have some like I'll have a, a draft, draft policy for you for your next meeting for yep. the next yep. meeting and I believe we can <clears throat> we'll have John there so we can talk yep. a little bit about who might um, might be on that committee uh, from the board of select and for the record that will be March 24th correct 24th right is the, is and then um, we need to advertise um, you know the openings right. so that's mm -hmm. another two weeks so in April you can populate the committee right. if you've yeah. finalized that on March 24th but we can possibly get some work done in the back. Oh, absolutely. Yes. You know, that mm -hmm. work is going to continue. Alan, I would really appreciate it if I could yeah. share that information. That's the Florida information that apparently I overlooked. Um, and it does explain why my letters are probably sitting on his <laughs> kitchen table. <laughs> As he basks in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can tell you where to find Alan during the day. <laughs> Well, thank you for attending and for the public input. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we'll stop that. All you have to do is vote for this closing, hearing. closing hearing. The, uh, is, that, yeah. is that it? Opening and closing it. Opening and closing. Probably closing. rapid okay. course. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I do have to read well, this. I haven't seen have anyone who's been right. interested in that particular. Is anybody topic? else here for the other? Wait a minute. i got to read this. Okay. Please take notice that the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Reading will hold a public hearing on February 24, 2015 at 820 p.m. in the Selectmen's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on amending the FY15 non-union classification plan. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the town manager's office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Tuesday from 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., and is attached to the hearing notice on the website at www.readingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on February 24, 2015. Uh, I'm going to ask that our two prospective uh, Board of Selectmen members just have their conversation outside <laughs> so we can kind of finish up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you cutting the campaign? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, so that I think that um, do we have any discussion on the hearing, the amendment to the fiscal year 15 classification panel? It, it all makes sense to me. All right. Makes sense to me. Very makes very sense to me. So Move that the board of selectmen close the hearing on amendments to the non-union FY15 classification plan. Second. Thank you, Kevin. 
Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? That would be 4 0. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve the amendments to the non union FY15 classification plan as presented. Second. All those in favor? That's 4 0. Move to adjourn. Is there any is there executive session? Oh, we are? We. Well, no. I don't think we need to because nope. we've uh, approved the executive no, session the minutes. minutes as we, written. We, they were Since we approved as written, it as yeah. written, we don't need yeah. to actually move uh, into you're the executive session. You are saved from that. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So um, you made a I motion made a to is adjourn. Is this the place where we, wait a minute. Oh, if, if you, no, no, no. If you have something else you want to. Do we have to sing happy birthday tomorrow? Oh. No, that's an executive session. Is that the executive session? Not on camera. Not on camera. This, this is not is American Idol. Second. <laughs> second. Uh, all those in favor of adjourning. All right, 4-0. Thank you.